Sometimes a breakup is just a blessing in disguise. But the unfortunate reality is that it doesn't feel like that when you're going through it. It can be a very tough pill to swallow. It can be a struggle for a lot of people. But it's not just the breakup itself that people have a hard time with. It's the aftermath. It's the feeling like I can't seem to stop thinking about this individual. I can't seem to be to stop questioning. Should I go get back with them? Should I give them another chance? You know, did I make the right decision? So many things can run through your mind and create this attachment to this situation that just won't seem to go away. And so now you're searching for ways to f officially, truly emotionally detach from this man. And I have the answers for you, all right? I'm gonna give you some guaranteed ways to accomplish this, but I need to cover a couple things that people tend to suggest in these situations that are actually very unhealthy and will cause more problems. So the first thing you should not do when trying to emotionally detach from a man is get under someone to get over someone. That piece of advice is one of the worst pieces of advice ever given to people because it is such an unhealthy approach that doesn't solve anything. Now, I'm not saying it may not have helped someone in the moment forget about their ex and forget about the struggle they're having with the situation, right? But it, it, it goes away. It's only temporary. So it doesn't sustain you. It's a coping mechanism, but it doesn't resolve anything. But on top of that, it doesn't always accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes you go mess with someone else and it only makes you think about the other person even more. So you're digging yourself a deeper hole, but let's consider some of the other angles to this, which is you're bringing in a third party into a, unstable situation and that may seem harmless if let's say for example you're a woman and you figure okay let me go casually sleep sleep with a guy um that i know i'm not trying to be serious with he's not trying to be serious with me this is safe it's just gonna be a distraction well sometimes it's those same situations that started off harmless that turn into many months years of now becoming attached to this new individual or this individual not wanting to let go of you or unwanted pregnancies happening or as far as unwanted marriages happening. Yes, this has happened from rebound relationships, okay? All because someone thought they could just use someone else to help them deal with their inner turmoil. It isn't fair to this new person. It isn't fair to you. And as I, as I already stated, it doesn't solve anything. You're only going to create more problems. So I highly suggest, and let me also say this, because as a woman, if you think sleeping with someone else will break you free from this other situation, well, be honest with yourself. Are you the type of woman that can get very emotionally attached once you give yourself physically? Because if you are that type of woman, that this is, again, it's already a bad idea, but we can times it by 10 now, all right? Like, that only makes it so much worse. You've got to be true to who you are and not trick yourself into believing that you can now all of a sudden handle this when that has not been your history, your history is that, yes, you start to get attached. So now you think that this new situation will break you free from the old one. No, you'll still have the old one lingering behind the scenes and you'll have a new one that you have an unhealthy attachment to. Again, just a bigger and bigger mess. So bottom line, do not do it. It's not the right way. I will give you the right ways to emotionally detach. Now, the second piece of I guess you could say bad advice when it comes to trying to emotionally detach is to go be busy. All right. And that's code for go distract yourself. 
Now, there's a, there's a form of this that is healthy that I will discuss a little bit later. But let's focus on finding distractions. Distractions are just, again, coping mechanisms. They are ways to try to manage the situation, but you're not resolving a damn thing. And because you're not resolving anything, you are only allowing the hurt, the negativity, whatever unresolved issues that exist to linger and to manifest into bigger issues, to now turn into uh, 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 emotional stress in your body that cannot just become new issues with the type of people that you allow yourself to entertain now, the type of relationships you engage in, um, your own personal behaviors, but it can also turn into physical ailments because emotional stress is still stress and it's going to now induce and trigger different things in your body. Stress is the number one, the number one inducer of disease. So you can't think that it's okay to just distract yourself, which think about this. You, you already have this unresolved stress from this situation. Then you distract yourself. And some people distract themselves to the point where they overwhelm themselves. So now you're becoming worn out and beaten down by all these distractions you're adding to your plate because you're trying to run from the real issue. So now you are more stressed. You become more unhealthy. And again, you dig yourself a deeper hole. Both of these pieces of advice I just gave you that are bad only cause more problems. So do not look for distractions. There are better things for you to do so that you can emotionally detach from this man. So let's get to these guarantee ways that you can emotionally detach from him, all right? And the first thing is remind yourself why this relationship wasn't working. Now, I, I specifically said why it wasn't working rather than why you two broke up. Because let's just say in this instant, for example, he broke up with you. So you weren't even looking to pull the trigger on this man. He broke up with you. You're hurt over it. You don't understand it. And, you know, that pain, that confusion has been lingering with you. However, in most situations, in the vast majority, if a woman was to sit back and really evaluate the situation, what she would realize is she wasn't happy to begin with. It wasn't a great relationship to begin with. There were problems being swept under the rug and overlooked, and he just happened to be the one to actually pull the trigger on the breakup. So what happens to a lot of people is if you are the person they broke up with, it's almost like you ever see a TV show where Someone's like getting ready to break up with their partner. They've been planning it for weeks. They've been trying to like just figure out the best way to say it. They were practicing in the mirror or whatever. And then they're finally getting ready to go break up with them. And before they say it, their partner breaks up with them. And now psychologically, it puts them in this mindset of, wait a minute, now I have to get this relationship back. Like, like now, because they don't want to be the one that's being quote unquote dumped, they now want to fight for this relationship. They completely forget all the reasons they wanted to break up in the first place. So there's this habit that we have, whether we were broken up with, whether, and sometimes, okay, we can flip it. Let's say you did pull the trigger. You broke up with him. Well, there's this habit that we have of thinking back at the good times. All right. And I don't care how bad a relationship is. Most relationships have some good moments. All right. Even when you work at a, a, a job you hate, many times you can find something about the job. Maybe there was some coworkers you liked. Maybe you enjoyed lunchtime, whatever the case was uh, over there. But our brain goes to these good moments that then starts to stir up these false feelings of I missed, I missed the feeling, but I attached the feeling to the person. So there's this quote that says, sometimes you're missing the feeling, not the person, but we confuse it. 
And now you start thinking, oh, I want them back. Oh, I miss them. I love them. But no, no, you did not belong there or it was unhealthy or maybe it wasn't time. And you have to remind yourself, why wasn't this working? What were the problems? These problems have not disappeared. They're still there. Why did I pull the trigger or, or why, you know, should I pull the trigger sooner? Not that you should be dwelling on that, but just to remember that, again, there are factors at play that maybe you are overlooking in the midst of you struggling with the fact that now you have lost this situation. And I use the word situation because, again, I want you to differentiate between missing the feeling, missing the situation versus missing the man himself. And when you can be more clear with yourself about that and remind yourself, it allows you to break free and break this attachment you have to this individual. The second thing for you to do to guarantee emotional detachment is to not fight how you feel. Now, I know that might sound confusing, but let me break it down for you. What I notice with a lot of people is they'll come to me and say, I don't understand why I keep thinking about this person who hurt me so much. Why do I miss this person who hurt me so much? And what happens is they're beating themselves up about the fact that they have these thoughts, these moments of missing them, these, these moments of wanting to be back with them. And in, in, and in dwelling in that and fighting themselves, they actually make it worse. It's like the more you, it's like being caught in a net. The more you fight the net, the tighter the net gets, all right? You got to learn to relax and not fight it. So when you are feeling this way, you can't beat yourself up. You have to accept that, listen, as a human being, it is normal, especially when this breakup is still fresh. It is normal to have these moments, these thoughts, these desires. It happens to the vast majority of people, yes, even in toxic situations. The reason why, again, might be because there were some good moments, might be because it feels like it was, it's safer to, to go back to that than to start over again, all right? Maybe because you feel like you have a time frame on when you want to be married or have kids or whatever you set in your mind. And now you feel like if I walk away from this completely, I lose that opportunity. Maybe it's, I don't want to be alone right now. Maybe it's, I just don't want to deal with the dating process. There's so many different reasons we can list, but again, understand and accept how you feel. Do not fight it. But the, the key word I use is understand it. Why? Be real with yourself. Why do you desire this, this man still? So an example is I, I had a, a situation where a young lady was struggling with a breakup with a man that she knows deep inside is not best for her. But, you know, she was having those moments of maybe I should get back with him, so on and so forth. Well, we started digging deep into her life. And what we discovered was she had a pattern of choosing men that she was not really deeply into. They were more into her than she was into them. And she was choosing these men out of safety, her, her perceived safety, because she felt like in those scenarios, she's less likely to be hurt. She has more leverage in that situation. She doesn't have to be as vulnerable, all right? But as I explained to her, and I will explain to you, the safe choice is pretty much always the wrong choice. It, at least almost always, if not always. And choosing men like this is just asking for disaster. So once we started to understand or once we started to uncover that, she was not really ever into this man. Like she kind of gave it a chance and it kind of, I guess you can say, quote unquote, grew on her. But that whole growing on you, a lot of times that just equates to you learn to tolerate them. You became accustomed to their presence. It became easier to deal with them than to go put yourself out there and try to meet somebody new. All right. So 
once she was able to see it for what it was, that eye-opening moment allowed her to free herself more from the situation. It chipped away at the attachment she had. So you've got to be real with yourself. Why are you holding on? Why were you even with this individual? What was it? Now, in fairness, because I'm, I'm giving all these scenarios where it boils down to that individual, that man wasn't really for you. But let's just say it's a situation where it was really what you thought was he's the one, not because you wanted him to be the one, but you felt an amazing connection, everything was awesome, but something went wrong here. Sometimes we have to accept and that just means it's just not time. And it goes back to what I said about recognizing why it wasn't working. Maybe it wasn't working, for example, because you two at, are at points in your life where you don't have the time available to pour into each other and build a relationship. Maybe you two are at points in your life where you both have some healing to do and your past traumas created too many triggers that was causing conflict in the relationship. You have to understand that there is work to do and let me focus on the work rather than dwell on why is this not working out right now, all right? But again, getting, getting to a deeper understanding is how we start to really move in a better direction and gain that emotional detachment that you're seeking. So that perfectly brings me to the next thing that guarantees emotionally detaching from a man is you need to heal from your past. So again, a, a lot of times the reason why we're struggling with these situations and the reason we were even in that relationship to begin with was due to unresolved issues from our past. Now, people have a habit of when they hear healing from your past, they think about healing from that previous relationship, from that other ex before this one, all right? Or that, that other situationship before this one. But I don't want you to just heal from the recent things. I want you to heal from everything. I want you to go all the way back in your past, all the way into childhood, because if we're gonna break this cycle, if we're gonna break these unhealthy attachments, then we have to get to the root of the issue. And we have to understand that by sweeping it under the rug, we are just, we're just guaranteeing that we remain in a negative cycle that won't be broken until we face it for what it is. So you've got to be willing to embrace the healing process. Now, I've mentioned this exercise before, but I'll, I'll bring it up again to kind of get the ball rolling with the healing is when you get an opportunity, you know, get a piece of paper and on that piece of paper, write down who hurt me and then ask yourself that question, who hurt me? And now every person who comes to mind, write them on the paper. It doesn't matter how long ago it happened. It doesn't matter if you think it's relevant or not. If they come to mind, put them on the paper and like a couple sentences of what they did to hurt you. This is how we start to recognize the hurt and put it out in front of you. Many of you will be shocked and surprised who makes that list when you ask yourself that question because you've been suppressing things for so long that you don't realize what has been there lingering this entire time. So that helps get the ball rolling. But what I want you to do in addition to that is check out my book, Love at the Heartbreak, which breaks down the entire healing process for you. It's like getting therapy, but at the, in the convenience of your home, at your pace, and it's going to be very well worth it. So click the link in the description or in the comment section, or you can go to www.loveaftheheartbreak.com. Let me also say this in regards to healing to break this, to create this emotional detachment from this man. If you want to ensure that you don't continuously end up in another situation like this, this is another reason why you have to heal. And you have to understand, I'm a firm believer that people who don't heal are 90%, and I'm, 
I'm throwing out the number 90. I, I never did an official study, right? But I believe it to be an extremely high percentage of people that when you don't heal, you're going to choose the wrong person to be with because you're choosing from your hurt. You're choosing from fear. You're choosing from uh, coping mechanisms. You're choosing from trying to avoid being vulnerable. It is very, very rare for an individual who has not healed to be willing to choose the person that they truly love most. The person that truly takes them there. The person that opens them up in a way that no one else can. That's a scary thing to face. That can be scary even when you are healed to a certain extent. All right? But when you haven't healed, oh, it's it's very overwhelming. So it's important that you do the work now. So not just for the sake of this situation, but for setting you up for better situations moving forward. All right, so that brings me to the fourth thing. And remember I said earlier, we don't want to engage in distractions. But what I want you to do is to focus on purpose and progress and being productive. Let me add that in as well. So here's the thing. Again, distractions are just occupying your time for the sake of occupying your time. Just trying to fill your plate up so that you don't have to think about this situation. But again, that is unhealthy. It doesn't lead to anything uh, greater. It, it can be a problem. What I want you to do is focus in on what should you be doing in your life right now? Maybe there were some things that you put to the side while you were dealing in this with this relationship that now that you have been freed, you can now focus your energy back on, all right? Maybe there are things that God wants you to be doing that you need to get started. And so this is the perfect time to make that happen. So going deeper within yourself, going, drawing closer to God, gaining guidance on what is my next step? What should I be working on? As well as, aside from what you're being spiritually guided to do, doing things that are going to be productive for your overall quality of life in general. Maybe this is the time now to get more serious about your health, all right? To get more serious about your fitness, to get more serious uh, about your education, um, whatever the case may be, things that will be of value to you as you move forward. And as you're working on these things, you focus on progress, not perfection. And, 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 and understanding that this is not, not just progress for the sake of what we are now trying to achieve with these, this new purpose in our life, but also progress in regards to this whole situation. Because though I'm telling you things that will guarantee to emotionally detach you from this man, what I'm not going to lie to you and say that the minute you do it, it's the next day, everything is perfectly detached. It's, it's a progression. It's a progression. If you take these steps, you're going to know that you're getting better and better and better. And then, yes, you will reach the point where you're completely 100% free. All right. But sometimes we set ourselves back because we're, we're dwelling on the fact that we have not progressed as much as we want to yet. It's almost like you ever go to the gym, you've been working out for a month, and you thought you were going to have these big old muscles or the perfect waist or whatever the case may be in 30 days, and then when you don't have the, the end result that you wanted, you're like, F it, forget it, I'm, I'm going back to eating my junk food and not caring anymore. And what you didn't realize is, though you may not be at the end result you wanted, if you look closely in the mirror, if you measured yourself, if you got an outside opinion, they would have been able to tell you, you made progress. You're moving in the right direction. If you just keep going, you will get to your end result. So when we're going through the process of emotionally detaching, we have to focus on progress. Yes, you may still have a thought about that man two months later, but remind yourself, two months ago, I was having thoughts damn near every day. Now, it's once in the blue moon. That's progress. That's progress. And it's going to continue to get better and continue to get easier, continue to put in the right work. And yes, continue to focus on purpose and being productive and doing things that add value to your life.
And now the fifth thing you can do to guarantee emotional detachment from a man is to get yourself an accountability partner. All right. So it's hard to stay on track with a lot of these things when we're trying to do it all by ourselves. You know, this is why I'm a huge believer in getting outside help. So if I, you know, for me personally, I have a trainer for the gym. I have a coach that I go to who's like coach slash therapist or whatever. I have those things in my life because I recognize that though there is much we can accomplish on our own, when we have someone to hold us accountable, we can do much better. All right. And it's it makes it easier for us to stay on the right track. And so I think sometimes as individuals, when we're going through these breakups, when we're going through this, trying to get over someone, sometimes you feel ashamed that you're still struggling with it, that you don't want to tell anybody about it. You know, maybe and and there might have been someone that you told and they're like, oh, why are you still thinking about him? What's wrong with you? They might have made you feel a little guilty or bad about the situation. So that might not be the person to be your accountability partner. But finding an individual who can be compassionate and understanding, but yet at the same time, hold you accountable to what you need to be doing, giving you that reminder, being someone that when you're having a moment of weakness, you can talk to and say, hey, I'm struggling, you know, I'm having this moment. I need you to, you know, coach me up, get, help me to get out of this. And whether it be, I would say you should have a friend if possible, friend or family member. Um, some of you may not be in that position to have someone. That's understandable. If you, you can't, you can't. But if you can, let's make that happen. But don't confuse accountability partner with also getting additional professional help. All right. So getting professional help is a great tool because, again, you need that outside perspective. You need someone that might be able to help you through the healing process. Like I want you to get the book and I want you to go through it. But if you need help, then don't be afraid to get that help. You know what I'm saying? And then, yes, still have your accountability partner. So now all you're doing is creating an environment for you to have greater success. Shoot, if you can have a couple accountability partners, make it a couple. Whatever you have to do to help you continuously move in the right direction, let's make it happen. And so before we wrap this up, you can call this the bonus. The bonus way to uh, guarantee emotionally detaching from a man is to give it to God. You know, I'm, I'm all about a relationship with God and talking to God and praying. And I think that, not I think, I know that when we have that relationship and when we can give it to God and give it to God means, listen, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting you. I know that though this outcome or this struggle may feel, feel like something that I can't deal with right now, I know you will get me through this. I know everything's going to be all right as long as I stick by you. I know you can guide me to better. When you have that mindset, it brings you more peace in the situation. And more peace strengthens your ability to set yourself free, strengthens your ability to detach because now you have a deeper understanding of whether this was supposed to happen for a reason. Because as I said in the very beginning, sometimes a breakup is a blessing in disguise. Sometimes it had to go this way. Or you let me let me not say it had to go this way. Let me say you had to be set free because that's not where you belonged. All right. And let me mention this because let's go back to the example of they broke up on you or Let's just say they cheated on you. And I recently had an event where somebody brought up being cheated on. And I made the comment that people gasped when I first said it because I said some of y'all needed to be cheated on. And I said that because if you weren't cheated on, you would have never let go of that man. You would have never walked away from that individual who you did not belong with. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes something that strong, that hurtful to finally wake you up 
and break you free from it. And so when we start to understand that, you know what, maybe this is our escape route. This is our chance to finally do what deep inside we knew we should have done a long time ago. But we kept ignoring it. We kept rationalized past it. We kept trying to convince ourselves otherwise. And now it got to a point where it's undeniable. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. Because again, once you understand that you weren't, you didn't belong there, now that means there's somewhere better that you belong. Somewhere better that God wants to put you to experience the blessings he has for you. So embrace that and move forward with a positive and grateful mindset. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on when to cut a man off during the talking stage of dating. If you are not attracted to him, the chances that you're gonna be able to give him what he's looking for is extremely unlikely, all right? That's why I mentioned that earlier. If, if you are the, the rare person who, despite no attraction, 